Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to be with all of you today. Um, thank you, Connie, for the introduction. Um, as she mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the impacts of drying and temperatures in coffee bean. This is more like thinking in the shelf life of the beans and like what really impact the quality. Then I'm going to share a little bit more about me. Um, I come from a very small town um, in the region of Cauca, Colombia. Um, um, my background is mainly in coffee quality, um, like an as an analyst, Q grader, and my parents uh, are still producing coffee, and this is how I start my career in coffee. I started cupping when I was 15 years old, and then since then, I, my passion has been just learning to be able to share more with producers like my parents and like with lots of people in the industry. Then in my past uh, four years, I was working with an importer company here in the US and, and that is also why, one of the reasons why I started doing this investigation or this research. Then here I'm gonna share a little bit about the background of a uh, how I end up doing this research and what was the motivation, right? Then uh, CQI launched the Q processing program in 2017. At that part, I also was a volunteer. I was living here already in the US, but I, I traveled to my country in, in my city also, in, in Cauca, Popayan, where we uh, launched the first Q processing level two, which is a level professional. In 2018, CQI released um, the kind of the sequence who was a Q Processing One generalist. This um, was more launch focused to the industry and like for like general knowledge about processing and, and, and production, but the professional one was more like focused to create and incentivate people to learn about processing and what are the important uh, things to know uh, for you can be able to produce a really good cup of quality and, a really good cup of coffee. I also wanted to um, apologize for my English. If he, in some point you uh, need to clarify something, just let me know. I'm still learning and it's just, hey. <laughs> yeah. Then in 2019, uh, the CQI also launched the Q Processing Tree or the expert level that was in a partnership with the Texas A&M. And with the University of Texas, what they wanted to do with CQI was um, have this amazing program that was like, really high level, like kind of almost a PhD in coffee. But um, for this one, then we have to create as students our own investigation. Then the main goal of the CQI was like have a program who can educate since the producer to people who can study and learn more about from the science point of view and like learn what are the key factors who really develop those flavors that we cup or like when we roast the coffee and we can have it. Then um, as part of that, uh, I was part of the, this first group of, um, of this class with, among with many other instructors. Uh, I was the first kind of female instructor of processing. And then I started doing my investigation uh, for this reason. Um, that took me like, we started in January 5 of 2019, and then took me like almost two years to be able to complete my, my research and investigation. Um, then here I'm gonna share a little bit about the, the program of post-harvest processing. I'm very new in the position in the CQI, but I'm very proud uh, being as a daughter of producer, and I have beautiful dreams about keep sharing more about processing with the industry and people understand how important are all our producers and how hard it is to produce coffee. And, and then that's what I'm gonna walk you through in this, in this research. Then what was the goal of this research? Was know the effect of the drying temperatures on the sensory quality of the seed, its viability and stability um, for its conservation or deterioration over time. Then why also this? Um, being in the stage of producer, I have worked in the past with cooperatives where my parents are members. I've been in the stage of the exporter and I also have worked in the importer, uh, all in, in quality control, specialists, capping and learning to be able to get back to the producers with this feedback. 
Then in all these stage, what is the common thing is like shelf life and quality. That's kind of somehow what moved the business in coffee. And then that was kind of what I was thinking at that moment when I was in the last step, like working in the importer and receiving coffees from different countries. I received coffees from 18 different countries and I always have these amazing coffees. Uh, they like some last longer and some deteriorate very quick. Then it was like, why this is happening? And that was kind of the main motivation to, to focus in drying because like everything is a trend somehow in, in the industry. And like you can see they are like right now, we still like in the past five years, like fermentation and like everybody just doing a bunch of different things, but that way processing in general is way more deep than just fermentation. It's like cover lots of things, lots of factors, and it's really, really important. Then um, that's the reason why I was like, okay, it's more, it's, just, it's not just fermentation, like the drying, play a huge role in the stability of the seeds. Then I don't know if you may have um, learned about, I did a research before in water activity, and then somehow was very interesting when I did this because I never expected this is gonna kinda cross somehow, and then they did. Like the results were like, huh, that really make more sense even in the, what I have experienced in my past. Then where I did this research, this research, I traveled to my home um, in Colombia, to Cauca, and then I did the research in an entity that is called Technicafe. Technicafe is the technological innovation park. It's a beautiful facility who has all the conditions, like the hotel, like the processing area, drying area, uh, lots of different varieties and cultivars, and then um, they also kind of were part of the, I just went there and, and kind of used that facility and like and be able to do this study to return to them for they can release it to the public and, and people learn about that. Then um, Technicafe um, is a place that you can hold. This is also an invitation. You can all, if you want to learn more about processing, about um, varieties and like they have since the processing areas to the a roasting classes, then this is a beautiful uh, place to travel and learn more about coffee. Then I, I did this investigation with varieties of like um, with Caturra varieties, yellow and red um, Caturras. I did this investigation mainly with Arabica. I used 120 kilograms of cherry. All of them were like, let's say, yellow and red Caturra. And then um, here is the processing, right? And in the processing, I did the reception of the raw material, the classification of this raw material, like the cleaning stage. This is, um, for many of you probably know about processing, but many of you may not. And this is very beautiful because you're gonna see all the stage the, the producer do for produce a good coffee. And like all the variables that can affect that cup of coffee, like have those flavors. Then, after the duck cleaning, uh, I select like what are the best cherries that I wanted to process. I pulp the coffee. The processing method I choose to process was wash coffee. And then the point of verification for like the washing point, how many of us call it, was with a fermaestro. I will talk a little bit more ahead about the fermaestro and, and what it, do, it does. Um, then I wash the coffee. After I wash the coffee, I remove like some of the floating beans and the, the kind of you can collect for like, you don't have that impacting or affecting the flavor somehow, like because are not the same quality or the same size or density. Then from this, at the moment when I wash the coffee, I separate or divide this in four different kind of uh, treatments, then there was the focus of this study, drying, right? Then I have it a control. In this case, I did a treatment number one. There was dry in uh, 35 Celsius. Um, a treatment two, there was drying in a 40. Treatment three, there was drying in a 45 Celsius. And treatment number four, there was drying a 50 Celsius. All of these have it replicas. Then I did a replica number one, two and three for treatment one, two, three, and four. 
with the intention to, I can validate it was any differentiation or was any variation in, in those um, coffees. Then after that, I measure um, like the point for I can know when I should stop drying the coffee was um, when the coffees reach 11% of moisture. Then at that point was when I, okay, I start kind of basically drying the other and the other and the other. Um, after the coffee was dry, I did an analysis and the percentage of the dead embryo, uh, which was something that I always was interested when I received it in the lab. Like all the samples they arrive and like uh, are lots of mites, right? They, like people say, oh, this is a dead embryo, but I didn't know it, it was really a dead embryo. And I wanted kind of in this study somehow also understand and, and verify if that's true. And it does signs um, that you can see, uh, I will show pictures later, uh, if those signs like the, the sinking of the embryo, it was a sign of that embryo. Then um, I also did sensory evaluation. I did a test that is called the trasolium test. This test, um, uh, I will also explain, don't worry. And, and I did another test for germination. Then I want to kind of cover all the possibilities um, they can give me uh, data about deterioration or like if the seed was alive or wasn't alive and how that will affect the, that time in storage. Um, after that, I, I also set like different points of like stages in the process. I evaluate in Month number one, like as a short term, a month number five as a medium term, and like long term, nine months. And in those sequence of evaluations, I did a test of like sensory, visually, and like green grading, and UV light, and water activity, all over that period of storage. What was the purpose? Like basically simulate all the, the we all wanted to know, right? Like as a roaster, probably when you buy a coffee, you wanted to have uh, that coffee that lasts longer and you wanted to have that same answer. Like why the coffee don't last longer? Or what, what I'm doing wrong or what happened with the producer side? Then um, that really kind of helped me to get to that point. Then here I, I divide the results uh, this is the first time that I'm sharing these results, like uh, this study haven't been published yet. And then, um, yeah, you are the first one to listen to that. Um, this uh, research I divided in three, sec in five sequence of like results. Um, then the first one I collect and have the results, of all the fermentation data, all the drying data, moisture, UV light, um, I did a selection of the parchment with the intention to do months later the germination uh, test. I did um, the hooling process and the green grading. I removed all the green grading, like all the defects uh, for also uh, have super clean coffee and over time in storage uh, I could test and were not like, oh, this flavor maybe is a flavor of because I have it too much of uh, beans cut. Uh, right, like that was kind of the nature, like remove all those beans and just have the quality it is conserving or is not conserving and with a minimal possibility vari variables, they can change me that. Then um, after that remo remotion of the defects, I did a aleatory sampling. Then for the germination, I wanted to guarantee that the coffees that I have it were like perfect seeds, like in parchment, they have it a specific weight and conditions and characteristics. But for the by viability test, I wanted was like, take all the sample, like guarantee that I have it a homogeneous sample, and then just aleatorily uh, took like 100 seeds from each treatment uh, to know if these seeds were alive or not. And in this case, I, I was not selecting them. I was just kind of, I wanted to know if uh, what it is there, right? To compare those results. And then I did the sensory evaluation, like time zero, and then I bring all the coffee to the US, also simulating what the producer does, right? Like processing, dry the coffee, and then pack it up and send it to the US or the uh, countries where, uh, the consuming countries, and then start that storage. Then um, in the stage number two, the um, I'm gonna be talking about the results of the viability test. 
Um, in the results number three, I'm going to be talking about the sensory evaluation uh, medium term, like five months, and uh, all the data comparison between the evaluation of the moisture and the water activity. In the stage number four, I'm going to be covering what were the results of the germination test. And in the stage uh, number five of the results, I will be kind of wrapping up the whole study, like, okay, where were what were the results of like sensory evaluation at the nine month period, a moisture versus water activity at those nine months, and the results of the UV a light data and signs of deterioration, like physical or sensory deterioration of the beans. And, and I also did in the stage number four, a, some variation just with the treatment or like the repli replicas number three, you remember that I say that I have it, the replica number one, replica number one, two, and three for each drying, uh, change of the drying in the temperature. Then um, just the replicas number three were the ones that I kind of exposes, uh, expose them at uh, different uh, conditions in storage for see what happened and complement also the results. Then here we go. Now we're gonna start talking how was that process. Then when I receive all the cherry, um, I start doing all the separation, all the cleaning for the coffee can be processed. Then here we start the processing basically class. <laughs> then um, I did a mechanical cleaning um, separation. Um, this is done by kind of a hydraulic separation is called siphon. Um, and then basically what I do is like, wash all the cherry and separate the dense ones, the, the other ones that are not that dense, and like also remove like stones or leaves or like things that can come from the, uh, from the field that we don't want it to have and that can may affect um, the flavors that I will have. Then after that separation, I did another classification of the cherry. This classification is by size and also separating cherries that are damaged or like break or like smash and just counting with the kind of cherries that were ripe and like complete. Um, the stage number three was like a op optical um, cherry separation. This is a machine the Technica Fe has, like no all the producers have all this equipment. This is uh, also a good example. The, this is a dream facility for go and like learn oh, like all the innovation, but like all the producers barely have like like limited conditions to process the coffee. Um, and you can do somehow all this stage with what you have, but it is way more easy if you have obviously uh, those, those facilities or those conditions. Then uh, in the stage three, this um, Technicafe has a equipment that is called a multi-scan. It's basically a, a machine they like go by velocity and then you put all the cherries on it and like it's taking like multiple pictures and separated and screened by saturation and, and intensity of the color. And then I was very lucky to come with that machine also and like do this other separation. And then even though I wanted, like I say, um, delete any variable that can affect the flavor or like those results that I wanted to achieve. Then I did another pass of like manual sele selection for like guarantee they have the best cherry possible. Then here that was like selecting all those um, um, buckets of cherry and then that was massive, that was a lot of work. <laughs> um, but then at the end of the day, what I wanted to achieve was like having the best one, the possible ones. Then how I targeted or like how I, like the metric that I took was like 95% of all that cherry I selected to be in this range. Like, the best one, like all the ripe ones, like consistent ones. And I have it, of course, like a percentage like this. I try to be very minimal. They were like 5% of cherries that were ripe, but not super ripe, like still a little bit like pinkish. Um, then um, here is more like the data of how, um, when I start um, the selection, like this was the total amount of cherry that I have it for this investigation, were like 298.25 kgs. But then at the end of the selection and all this classification, I have it 
a total of 120 kgs. Then you can, with this, you can also have idea how hard it is for a producer when you ask like, oh, I wanted this best coffee with this, and they have to do all of that for guarantee day. The coffee is really good and like probably they can use obviously the other amount of cherry they are not classifying for the best quality specialty coffee. They can do a different processing technique or dry it and, and sell it in the market. But that's a lot of coffee of difference like when you do that classification. Um, then um, I start the pulp in my coffee, I did a pre-fermentation of like with all the cherry they have it, clean and cataracterize it. Uh, I leave it doing uh, this pre-fermentation of 12 hours. After of those 12 hour pass, I uh, the pulp my coffee because I wanted a, a wash coffee. Then uh, after I depulp the coffee, I have it to, uh, 71 kgs. That's kind of how much you lost just with a skin and the parchment and like, like all the cherry have different layers, right? Then probably like for the producers who just focus in producing natural coffees, like they have, they are not losing like much at the moment. They will lose it at the end when they mill the coffee. But for a wash coffee, like you have to remove the skin, then you remove um, the mucilage, and then you will have the parchment. Then in this case, like those 71 kgs are like with the parchment and all the mucilage on it, then gonna be more losses uh, in the process. Then I did a, another um, kind of floating remotion very quick. I add water and remove at that moment some more other um, light beans and immediately remove all the excess of water and start fermenting for I can achieve a dry fermentation. Then here I don't want it to try to do experimental fermentation, so different things I wanted to have, like um, kind of the normal conditions that I can guarantee they have it a clean cup and they can evaluate the results they wanted. Then um, here was when I put the coffee and I start setting up like, the buckets uh, with the proportions. This is um, this little cone that you can see here or probably here, that is what is called Fermaestro. That was kind of the point of reference that I use uh, for checking that fermentation. Then the Fermaestro Hogwarts is like his work in base of density. Then it's like you pack it up like, like this. You fully, completely like pack it up with the coffee and then you locate the cone into the mass of the fermentation. Then when the mucilage is start fluidizing, it's like, um, this is a plastic thing that basically have little holes and all the mucilage start kind of going out. Then by density, start kind of lowing and, and getting to this point, like have these lines. Obviously this was done, um, it, it could not be applied for all the countries because it was done in an investigation in Colombia, uh, Senicafe, Center of Investigation of Coffee from Colombia, and then was done in base of um, Castillo variety. Then in Colombia, people use it a lot, and even like we, as in the processing program, we bring it to different places for people can learn and maybe adapt this technique or create something similar. To, to their varieties, but it's, it's very fascinating just how, how that works. And then when the coffee low to this point, it's like it's ready to wash. Then before the older techniques, what the producer used to do was like use a stick of wood and basically stuck in the, in the mass of the fermentation. Um, obviously if that was without water, like the fermentation was just like dry like this, then at the moment when I remove that stick of wood, uh, if the coffee doesn't kind of fall in, was like, was ready to wash. If the coffee fall in, it was like, need more time. Then that was kind of the main one that most of producers use, a cheap one, an easy one, they are being for all the history of, 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 of the uh, producing uh, of coffee. But then the other technique was like, take a little bit of the wash, like see if the remotion and the sound, because it's, the sound is different and it's more like dry. It's like, then if wash and the mucilage go off very easily, okay, it was done to wash. But now like, and hopefully 
we can keep having more and more equipment like this that can be cheap and easy for the producer to use and rely on because the producer is not like they have to do all these hard work to get to that good cup of coffee, but they don't have all those tools for control and the risk for them is so high. It's so high, like you can do or try to simulate and do exactly the same every harvest and this harvest you can have a terrible defect and you lost all your production because uh, you have a defect in the flavor and the buyer don't wanna buy it or don't wanna pay a good price for that. Then things like this, very simple innovations, uh, lower cost really help producers for they can at least in this case control the fermentation or like know when to stop the fermentation and don't over ferment the coffees. Um, if we go to talk about um, experiments, coffees, or like, oh, diving into fermentation, that will be a different thing because obviously in this case, people wanted to extend the fermentation and don't just uh, have that. Um, but I don't wanna go to that part here. What I wanted to show is like, that's how I set it up. Uh, I track all the um, pH um, data, I track all the moist, uh, the, um, the temperature data in the fermentation. I set it up these um, buckets in an area that was totally enclosed. I put an air conditioning uh, for like also keep the temperature like at 20 Celsius with the intention that was like the, the my mass of the fermentation done kind of went up in the temperature and then again, that's not things that all the producer has, um, but yeah, the results I'm very, you will see it. I'm very happy to share those because I think I try to isolate the more possible things. Then after the fermentation was complete, I track all the process of the fermentation every four hours. And day and night, every four hours I was measuring until I reached my point of the fermentation or like washing point. Then I wash all my buckets and here's um, kind of the summarizing of the fermentation. Then um, here you can see that I take the relative humidity of the place day where I was fermenting, the ambient temperature, I did all the controls every four hours and I take pH and temperature of the mass of the coffee. Then at the end I have a 28 hours of fermentation and I start a, my drying. That was what I wanted to have, right? Then at this moment, I divided all the mass of coffee that was washed in 12 equal parts. Um, and then I set it up like treatment number one for mechanical drying at 35 Celsius with replic replica one, two, and three. Treatment number two, 40 Celsius, one, two, three. Treatment number three um, with 45 Celsius, one, two, three. And and the 50 Celsius temperature. Then what was the dryer that I use? Um, I use a mechanical dryer that is called the dehumidifier type. Um, it's a static dryer. That's also another innovation um, that I was very lucky to count on because most of the dryers the producer used don't, could not control the temperature of the drying. Then have kind of um, like a baseline, like, or the maximum line that you can go, but it's not like you can set it up. Ah, I want it to dry in 40 Celsius. That's, that's not real. Like now we are getting more companies that are investing in like developing equipment like those the producer really can uh, control temperature. Um, but this was one of the examples, was the only dryer the Technica Fe have it available who you can really control the, the temperatures of that drying. Then this equipment is eco-friendly and then it's called the Eco Enigma. And, and basically what does is like uh, every um, coffee that you dry, basically all the water get recycled and basically kind of get out here. Then you can use that water for cleaning your equipment in the, in the processing, which is pretty cool and is not common at all. Um, then not much about that dryer is like have some trays and then I set it up in the temperature that I wanted to dry. And then in the meantime, I have this kind of transitionary um, beds where I set up all the coffees in the meantime that I can 
start putting to dry uh, the others. Also, I use those mm, um, dry beds for like stabilize the coffee at the moment when I finish the drying. It's like exactly the same as when you are roasting, the you wanted to have the tray to cool off, right, the coffee. You don't want to pack it up when it's warm. It's the same, like I don't want it to pack up my uh, parchment when it's still warm or hot, then I just use those for like stabilize the coffee. Then this is the process. Um, I also was tracking the data all this time for each treatment and the replicas every four hours or sooner if I needed when I was getting close to the last point of, of the drying. And I also kind of moved the coffee because as being a stationary um, dryer, it's not like half day you can move, like, move itself, right? And I kind of do that every time they check and took the data, move it to guarantee that everything was uniform and good. Um, and then at the end, um, I pack the coffees and, and put it in, in grain pro bags. Then what was the tar total um, number of days I used for like drying? I start the drying in the 16 and I finish in the 20 with all, all the replics. Then here was the first results of that data, which was very interesting, the, the way lost of those uh, coffees. Because all the coffees that were dry in the temperature of 35, like that was the total results at the end, was like 2.45 kgs. And the water activity was 0 0.54. Um, you remember that I say that I just stopped the drying at 11% for all treatments. Then here you can start seeing the, doesn't matter if you dry in 11%, the water activity inside of the bean is, is different, can reach different um, and numbers. And, and that was exactly the case because that's more like taking the water that is really kind of inside the bean um, compacting the bean. Then for the treatment that was dried at 40 Celsius, uh, also that was super interesting. There was like still being in 11%, but the loss of the, the kind of dry base they have it way, was lower and also was reflected in the, in the water activity. The same for the 45 and the 50, like more and more all of those being in 11% of moisture. Then that what tell us just right there is like how much temperature I inject in the bean is like more pressure for all those cells inside, like all those molecules of water to get kind of push out and release. Then also like are many other scientific research that show oh, like what other compounds you are losing or like, like are getting out at the moment when um, you dry or the other ones that you can also gain. Then this is kind of the results now, more like focusing in the water activity. And then that was kind of how behave every one of them. Then I have it, all of those, I consider they still being really good water activities, being in 11% of moisture. Um, but that was kind of the higher than lower temperature they dry, more weight that I can have, which in this case, this can be very good for producer because at the end, what you sell is the weight of the coffee that you have, then that means if the producer is drying a high temperatures, is losing weight, which is money. And, and also um, that affect all of us because you also <laughs> pay for that weight, right? Then um, now the next uh, step or like results was like all the selection that I did for the parchment. Then for the parchment, I choose like all the best one, like all the beautiful ones, like kind of one gram, two grams weight per seed or per parchment. And I delete all those, like I didn't want it to have those because that can affect my potential of germination. Then I select those. I put it in those bags, mark it as by temperatures, they was dry, and then um, I save them for two months for I can lay it on when I move the coffee to the US, do that germination um, test. Then what happened with the other part of the coffee? I hold the coffee in this little hooler machine that's what all the labs in origin countries can use, are like, no, the huge cooling machines are like those little ones, they are kind of for samples. And then um, 
I try to be the more careful possible and then I select and remove all the defects that I was telling before. Then as soon as the coffee was, I remove all those defects, I did the same. I, in this case, blended in, guaranteed they were hom homogenized, and then I took randomly, you remember that I mentioned there was randomly taken for do, um, the viability test. There was another that I will share the results ahead. Then I pack it up and save it, also bring it to the US too. Then later on do the uh, test. Then here was the first results of the kind of UV light uh, data. Then all the coffees, like of course I found that they have uh, these little ones, spots like partially reflected but very minimal. They can be do the hooling or like the, the pulping machine who caused those. Oh, and also I found some like this, they were fully uh, reflected. Um, then both were um, in all the samples but were very minimal and I will show here the data ahead. Then this was the other one that I wanted to evaluate, was like all those kind of sinking in of the beans. There was very constant amongst all the samples, then I always thought there was like dead embryo. They what, like all those beans were like, oh, have a dead embryo, and that wasn't the case, but I will tell why that happened. Um, then, this is the data of those, it's like all the, probably some of those uh, graphs, you will see it in Spanish, but I will walk you through because that was kind of how I did the, <laughs> the study was in Spanish. But then all the uh, blue ones, like those, uh, mean represent like all the beans, they were uh, all completely reflected on the UV light in all the treatments. And if you can tell that was very minimal, like, like from the 100 um, seeds that I took from each treatment, that was very consistent that that was just in the treatment that was dry at 40 Celsius and one in the, in the 45, like, but it was very minimal. Then that doesn't say much. But then all the beans, like all the lines that are in red or like orange, uh, means all the ones that were partially reflected like those ones that I show you they have those little kind of spotlights and those are here that definitely was a little bit higher but it's still being very minimal that's like seven beans eight beans with little kind of spots on it and then the green the gray one of silver represent like the number number of the seeds they have it that sinking in the bean they I thought it was that embryo then 100% of all the samples have it that consistent. Then um, later on, you will remember this because we're gonna get back to that. But then at this point, I already have it, the grading, I have it, everything done. Then I create my own profile. I did it in Ikawa. Uh, why in Ikawa? Just because that was kind of the way they thought they, I could guarantee the, if I create that exactly same profile, I could replicate on and on and on and on every time do the storage um, process. Then here is the first results of the capping. I create my profile, then I cap the coffees. Uh, these coffees were capped with a panel of like uh, three people. Um, they don't have an idea where they were, like just cap it and evaluate it. And what a surprise, because all the coffees they were dry up Five, uh, 50 Celsius, the three replics like were in 83.75, like were lower in quality. And remember, this was the best cherry, best harvest, uh, the same coffee. This is exactly the same coffee and the huge difference that I can find just by the temperature of, of the drying. Then, oh, 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 what I did, sorry. I get excited. Um, then here um, in the 45, uh, the temperature of 45 was also very interesting. There was like the highest score that I found, like 85.25, um, 40 Celsius, still in 84, just a little bit lower. And then a, in the 35 Celsius, 84, but lower. Then that was pretty interesting. Um, but from here, what I did was, okay, with that panel and all that data was like, check what were the notes that were similar 
or the same or what were the notes they change because if that's, those temperatures impact the quality I wanted to know why in what qualities or characteristics change then for the control there was the 35 Celsius the lower temperature I found characteristics like caramel, clementine, cocoa, grape. The aftertaste was dry, a little bit dry, acidity was bright, medium body. In the temperature at 40, a little bit higher, I found citric again, but it was different. It was more like tangerine, raisins, prunes. The acidity is still being bright and medium body. In the temperature at 45, I found more complexity, that's what you saw it in this course. I found milk chocolate, honey, caramel, raisins, plum, uh, intensity with the tangerine, brown sugar, the aftertaste was vibrant, the acidity was vibrant, the body was full body, then way more complexity. Then that already tell me a lot about that drying and how I can optimize even the flavors that I get. Then in the temperature of 50, there was the higher, were the less complex of the others. That was like cola, um, intense, prolonged, and full body, but I lost most of the other flavors and characteristics. Then here is kind of the, the summarize of how they look like. Then they were consistent, they were the same coffee, then of course they have it kind of the same pattern or roots. They were like fruity, citric, and like sweet and chocolate. That was kind of I can tell there was kind of the profile from the origin, from the farm with the uh, variety. But then uh, here are kind of all the variations. And like you can see here, it's also like the one that was way more complex. Then done the evaluation. Okay, I pack it up, move all the coffee samples to the US for the start the process of the storage. And then this was um, a storage in those black um, bags in Grain Pro in, uh, in Sustainable Harvest facility at that time. And then um, those coffees, I kind of eliminate or I try to, they don't get much light possible and we're in a temperature constant of like 20 Celsius. Then now let's move on with the results of the stage two. The, for the stage two, I did this um, test that is called the tetrasolium test. What is the tetrasolium? It's basically a salt. They activate um, or they mark by coloration the uh, enzymatic activity of the seed, like the respiration of the seed. Then you can see or think, oh, huh, the seeds kind of <laughs> breathe or have that respiration. Of course, they have in multiple of cells that also you will find they somehow also connect with the water activity and how the water kind of migrate because the seed is alive. It's not like it's dry and die. No, it's alive and have respiration. Then this uh, test, what try to um, by the coloration is kind of show what are the tissues that are alive. And like if the seed is die or dead or like, or is alive. And then uh, for that process, I have it to do a uh, hydrate all the seeds by 72 hours. And then it was super interesting um, seeing this because at the moment when I put water to, I use the distillate water to uh, hydrate the seeds, but then they went changing at the time the, the 72 hours were passing by. Then what were the changes? These were the changes. All of them have the same distillate water but then here you can see how much the seed can lixiviate and kind of, like, uh, I don't know, get out. Then was like transparent at the beginning and in stage two, that was the color. And then in stage three was like way denser and darker. And then in stage four, like more like if you put a cup of espresso on it, it was very fascinating. Then, um, after this, what I did was like remove all this um, texture and like liquid and like leave the seeds. They were already ready and more soft for I can start doing the cutting and being able to do the tetrasolium test. And then that, that was how happened. Like I used 
Patrick um, dishes for like put all the treatments and all the temperatures cut. I were in total 1,200 beans that we have it to cut. Like my husband helped me to cut all of those. <laughs> that was a lot of work, <laughs> thing work at home. And then uh, I have it a total of 2,400 um, 2, beans cut day. We have it to do a specific process in a specific temperatures and then do the counting for know how many of these seeds were alive or not. Then when that happened, that's kind of how it looks like when we finish to cut it and like put it on. And here we already start looking, okay, in those 72 hours, some beans already start the process of germination. Like you can tell this is like the embryo of the seed. And then those, I separate them, but keep it together like this, like by treatment, like, okay, the replic number three, for example, dry it in 45 Celsius, and, and then I monitor until I finish and we're able to get the data. But also here, when we start cutting, we start seeing also results, like some embryo looks like this, like darker and sinking inside of the bean. Some embryos, like those, they were germination, germinating, looks like that, and some other were like this. Then after that process was complete, that was kind of the results. Like all the beans, they were alive, and like all the tissues, they were alive, and the uh, enzymatic um, activity of the bean was activated, colored, and like turned like this pink. And all the beans, like the tissues were dead, like don't colorate at all. Then uh, that's kind of what we wanted to find out with the tetrasolium test. Um, then here you can see in this, there were no coloration. This was a little bit, but if the coloration is less than 50% of the bean, that means like less than 50% of the beans have tissues that are alive, then it's not considered a being a viable um, or viable uh, seed for you can germinate. Then this is the results at the end of the day with the tentrasolium test. Um, the blue ones represent like the pattern of like the, the tension or like the stain of the of the bean. Like all the beans, they are alive. Then you can see here the the 35 Celsius, like lower temperature. Like all the tissues in the bean, like more than the 80 percent, almost like closer to 100, were alive. The Higher the we increase the temperature in the drying, the lower the, those tissues were alive. Then until in the 50 Celsius, we can see that they die. We were trying to get seeds. That, that probably like drying beans at 50 Celsius is not the best idea because my probability of like viability of the seed is, is bad. But then in the ones who are in um, orange represent the ones the we didn't have it um, stain or like the embryos or like seeds they, they were dead. Then you can see that that is the opposite, like increase to the moment that the coffee is dry a higher temperature. And then the, green, the gray one or silver indicate um, all the hydration like a stage that the coffee went through. Um, and then the um, orange one indicate the viability. Then basically the viability low at the moment that we dry a higher temperatures. I don't want to make you sleep. Let's go up one, two. <laughs> move up, move up one second. And then we go sit again for like, you keep engaged. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay, now you can see. Um, I, I promise I'm close. We are just in the second stage of the results. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then here, um, this is the results, like the total uh, results, then you can see the, in the 35 Celsius, um, the percentage of the viability of the seeds were like 96 up. In the ones dried uh, 40, 77% of the viability. In the 45, 58, like way lower. And in the 50, super lower, like 38. Then, 
those are more pictures of how it looks like, like the average of all the beans they didn't um, stain and like they were dead. Um, then now we're gonna move on with the stage three of the results. Then let's open up with the capping. Then at the stage three, there was like five months of storage. Again, I, we have the panel of cappers. Uh, this copy was submitted and then was evaluated. What a surprise, did nothing change. Nothing changed. The scores were consistent. Um, a 50 Celsius still being lower. Capping score, 45 the same, 40 the same, and 35 the same. Nothing changed, but the moisture is still being 11%. Water activity is still being the, the value there was at the beginning. The storage condition were consistent. Then the coffee, I can keep it for five months until this point without having any deterioration of the seeds. Um, in sensory quality if I keep my right conditions of storage. Then, uh, checking up what were the differences in flavors or if something changed in the flavors, in the descriptors, nothing changed. Were the same descriptors, the same characteristics. Uh, here you can see it's exactly the same. Then that was a, a good indicator of, okay, they were holding up for those five uh, months without any change. Then here is the results of the um, moisture and water activity. Then all those light ones, blue light ones are the moisture and the darker blue are the water activity. Then I say all the results were very consistent, nothing changed, which was a good indicator at that point. Um, here, um, what I wanted to compare was like the initial point of the moisture at month one when I did the first capping versus this in like in five months of storage. Nothing changed, all was exactly consistent. Now let's move on with the stage uh, of the results number four. Then here, the, these beans that I did for the germination test, um, it's not like took like above the six months before I can get there. No, I set up exactly the same as I did the tetrasolium uh, test, like after two months of storage, just the results came up later because it took me until they, all the coffee were germinated for I can be able to count them and be sure they, that were the results. Then I did the same of the tetrasolium. I put it to hydrate all the parchment. There was a nice one that I select. And then after those 24 hours um, of um, hydration of the bean, I did exactly the same like, as a producer will do at origin, like it, put it the germination or put it the seeds in sun for germination, like this in lines. And then I start tracking all the data until the point by temperatures they were um, germinating. Then here you can see just when they started, starting, starting, here I can have more, they were already germinate, here more, and then that's kind of the total picture of all the samples with all the replicas, and, and until I have it, my little plants of coffee. Then at this point, I track uh, how many days they took for germinate, and how many of they germinate by the temperatures. Then this is kind of the summarize of the data. Then for the germination uh, results uh, from those seeds, they were selected, remember? Um, the yellow one represent the one, uh, the number of days they take for the seed to germinate. And, oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the gray one is the one of the days. And the yellow one is the one of the number of seeds they germinate. Then for the lower temperature dry, we replica one, two, and three. Um, I have it, the kind of hundred percent of them germinate. And 99, 98% of the dried in 40 Celsius um, germinate, 
97 in the 45, 96 in the 50, which was very interesting because if I compare with the tetrasolium, this is saying that if I select my seed, the best seed, I can still optimize my kind of ratio of like germination, even if I don't have the best seed to plant, but if I select it, I can get a good one. And those were the number of days. Then since they were trying at lower temperatures, germinate faster uh, than the others they were dried at lower, uh, at higher temperatures. Then now we're gonna move with the last stage, which make it super, super interesting and put it all together. Then what happened here? This is the water activity and the moisture and how things change. Then in this stage, um, what I did at, my, at month five, because I saw that nothing changed, then I was like, I can wait until this nine months complete and the results can be that nothing changed, uh, which is good, but what if I have it as a normal warehouse, they probably don't have the conditions for set it up at 20 Celsius and just expose those being a, a different conditions and see what happened. Then this is where I take the um, replica number three for each treatment, 35, 40, 45, and 50. And I just move it out from that room that was at 20 Celsius and just leave it in a room in a facility, just there, no with a control conditions to see what happened. Those, those seeds were exposed just for four months and that's kind of the result at the nine month. Then at the nine month, the water activity and the moisture of the seeds were the same. Nothing changed if I have it a really good condition of storage, nothing changed, but when I, those ones that was exposed, the absorption of water was huge, was very different. Then I have a day for the 35 Celsius, they were like water activity of 0 0.54 increased to 0 0.66. And the moisture also increased and was in 12.9. Uh, for this 40, the moisture and water activity were 11 and 0 0.51 and the water activity increased to 0 0.63. And the moisture 12.7 for the 45, were in 0 0.5, increased to 0 0.52, and like 12.5, and the for the 50, 12.2 with 0 0.6 being in 0 0.49. Then that also tell a lot the, the coffees, like as you all know, they are hygroscopy, they can absorb and lose moisture. But then if I have it in a good conditions of storage, I can really have a coffee that last nine months in this scenario without any changes. But that is due to the water that I have on those seeds. The water was stable, in this case, 11%, and I have a right storage conditions. Then for those ones, they were out of like, they were different. Um, I did a follow-up in like deterioration, like physically. Then all those beans, um, the absorbed moisture show this, like all those edges like fading, like whitening, and like those characteristics. Oh, some even getting darker again, absorbing that moisture. Then that show me like deterioration in the bean, and, and that was just for the ones that I exposed to regular conditions. Um, then here you can see um, for the treatments, like the blue ones means the beans, they were partially reflected under UV light. Then here kind of still being consistent. So how with the ones um, they I have it, the data from the previous months. Uh, the orange one, Mm, are the ones that were completely reflected on the UV light. And the gray one, like all the ones who show like physical deterioration. Then here, like that was consistent, like all the ones that were exposed to those conditions immediately start showing age and deterioration uh, physically and the others, no. The others stay in the same characteristics. Then these are pictures of those, those beans, like the ones that are in the top, are the ones 
who were in the optimal conditions and nothing changed, being in 11% of moisture, replica one and two of all the treatments, very consistent, and those that are heating the bottle are the one that were exposed to different conditions and the, and the deterioration show up, but also on the UV light where all they've been super reflected. Then this is kind of the general sample, like took it in the back. That's how they looks like at nine months. Um, that means they no deterioration has like visible deterioration had happened if the moisture is stable and water activity. But this is kind of how they looks in the back, like very bad uh, when they were exposed to different conditions and the moisture just jump up. Then um, in the capping score, Closing up with the last capping score, then here, here are the results, like 50 Celsius, like replica number three, um, cap 80 points, a replica uh, number three of the 45 Celsius, 79, 75, and the dry one at 40 Celsius, 79, 75, and in the 35, 77, 25. Then here, this definitely directly correlate with the moisture. If I go back here and we see the moisture, for this one, they absorb way more moisture. They were in 12.9. The capping score was the lower one here. Like the drop of quality was huge. Then the other ones that were stable in the same conditions, didn't change much, which also is a good result. Uh, I, we did have it, this like in the 40 Celsius and in the 35, also they improve little bit over time. They were like the notes were stable and little bit more complex. Um, but the others like in sequence, like lower and drop the quality in, in, in the flavor. Then this is just the comparison of every Temperature, dry, like 35 Celsius, replica one and two. That's how I end up have nine months of storage. And this is the replica number three. How much the profile change? It's a huge change. Like instead of having a coffee that was <coughs> fruity, citric, sweet, and chocolate, I have it a cedar, dirtiness, or like a, um, soil notes. A cereal, granola, um, the same. But here, remember this one, because rem this one was the one they absorbed more moisture. Then the profile just were bad way more drastically than the others. Then here is the, for the 40 Celsius, this is how it changed the profile. Um, chocolate, cereal, still a little bit of citric, but more like pepper. Then um, for the 45, they were, remember, the more complex that we have it since the beginning. Uh, still being not that bad, this, this didn't lose or absorb that much moisture, but appear those notes like granola, cereal, nuttiness, and all that complexity just fade away. And this is for the 50 um, Celsius, that was kind of how end up. Then this is the whole data basically here summarized. Then we have the, uh, you can see the water activity, moisture, average score, month one, month five, and month nine. And just the one that we exposed to those different conditions were the ones who change. Then the, what tell us, like the temperatures of the drying don't, um, will make the, the coffee last less or longer. Nothing have to be impact in the development of that flavor. You remember like how the flavors behave and like express and those complexity really were directly correlated to that, but not with the storage and the stability of the bean. Then here, look in the moisture and water activity. Moisture, water activity, it is very connected to that stability of the bean over time in storage. Then now we go to the conclusions. 
Then the first conclusion of this is like um, the decrease, uh, we have a decrease in the viability of the seeds, seeds uh, due to the drying temperatures. Then all the coffees, they are dry above the 35 Celsius. Um, the viability is compromised. We have more seeds with dead embryo. We have greater number of seeds with affected tissues. Then when I was saying at the beginning, the less remember of the sinking of the beans, then all those data prove that the beans are still alive. And just that sinking is a show of like, the seed is alive, I'm exposing it to temperatures. Then it's like the activity, like the enzymatic activity of the bean being a seed and wanted to germinate is what is kind of reflecting. It's just the embryo showing up there, but it's still there, it's still alive. Not necessarily means that it's dead. In some cases, that like you also see it, yes, can be that inside, but that's not something that visually we can just say, oh yes, it's all that, because it's not true. We will have to do a test like we did for we can really know how percentage of that was dead or was alive. Then the second conclusion was the, in the case of the germination. That was like, how many of them, or like, what happened with, if the seed is alive or not. But for the germination, um, the potential of germination um, will, like the best seeds, they, if we select those seeds, we can mm, improve the potential of germination, but then the best one gonna be like 35 Celsius. Uh, when we try coffees at 35 Celsius, we have good seed uh, for germinate, but if we use higher temperature of 35, I will decrease the potential of germination. Then the next results or conclusion, um, the temperatures, uh, it was found the, the drying temperatures impact the development and the modulation of the flavors. As you could see, it does impact the flavor and how they express and how complex they can be. I think all coffees, in this case, they were lower than 50 Celsius, you remember, was kind of the opposite for the flavor, like all they were dry lower than 50, have a better score, the coffee's dry 50, um, and the 45 was the best for expressing all the flavors that that coffee had. Um, the other one is the um, inadequate conditions, the storage conditions uh, can lead to absorption of moisture, but also not just absor absorption, they can lead to changes in the moisture and the stability of those seeds. And last ones, um, a long-term sensory stability wasn't affected by the drying temperatures. Affect the flavor, but no, nothing to be with how much they last in our storage. Um, next one is what really impact or made the deterioration happen in storage in the physical and the sensory is the amount of water that we have. All the water that is available in the seed uh, and how much time that what it is retaining the seed, that is what accelerate the deterioration. You remember when I was talking about the coffee is breathing or like have respiration, that is what is happening. When the coffee has lots of water, it's active, like all the seed is super active, it's kind of ready for germinate and that's kind of what activate the, the process of deterioration. And um, coffees with high moisture and high water activities age faster. And deterioration rate is directly um, correlated with the amount of water in each bean. And the last one, the drying coffees above 45 Celsius generates a decrease in the potential that I already have in the profile of the coffee. Then, here I also want to mention the, uh, that was a lot of people involved for I was able to do all this intense research, uh, but Technicafe did incredible, this techno part that I was mentioned at the beginning. Um, Supra Cafe Colombia was another entity who provide all the machines uh, for I can conduct do this. At that time I was working with Sustainable Harvest and uh, I want to also say thank you to them. As, to my husband who helped me to cut all 200, 2,400 seeds. And Wilton Benitez who is the person of the dryer who helped me to set it up in the temperatures they wanted to prove. And I, I wanted to 
mentioned that and I hope you really like it and enjoy and learn with me about this and thank you, muchas gracias. Mm -hmm.